Another forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Alrighty, we have winter storm warnings. We have winter weather advisories in effect. Both of these lasting till about 10 p.m. later tonight because of a wintry mess that will be moving in as well. And further down toward the coastline, we also have small craft advisories till 7 a.m. And also gale warnings also in effect until about 7 a.m. as well. Now we're watching everything starting to develop now, especially in the northern ends of the state. During about the morning period, we're going to be seeing this fill in even more with, of course, more wintry mix precipitation moving in. So we're going to be seeing a wintry mix of rain, freezing rain, sleet and snow throughout the daytime today as all this tracks in from the west to the east. And yeah, it looks like if you look closely here, just north of Boston, some lightning has been developing as well. So maybe some lightning occurring with the precipitation cannot be ruled out either. So that wintry mix will switch over to snow this afternoon as temperatures fall. While later this evening, a lot of that starts to calm down. And look at this, we clear out overnight, so a lot of sunshine on the way as we head towards your Saturday. Winds will be out of the north from time to time at around 50 miles per hour sustained, maybe even up to 20 miles per hour. But notice what happens as we head towards your Saturday. The winds overall start to calm down to around 5 to 10 miles per hour or so. So that forecast for today, mid-30s, our winter mix will get going, making travel a mess out there. We'll switch over to snow. That north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. Our frozen precipitation keeps going, switching over to snow as temperatures fall. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. If you were a victim of a burglary or theft in the St. John Valley in the, in the last year, authorities may have some good news. Since the spring of 2020, multiple law enforcement agencies have been investigating reports of burglaries and thefts. They say suspects were developed and they have recovered a large amount of stolen property. If you are a victim, whether reported or not, police ask that you go to the Fort Kent Police Department at 416 West Street between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. on February 20th. That is Monday. Law enforcement will be there to speak with you and will help you identify your property. Well, in other news, a convicted child molester will spend more than 20 years in prison after being found guilty of sexually assaulting a child under the age of 12. 40-year-old Corey Farley of St. Albans was arrested in August of 2021 and charged with gross sexual assault and unlawful sexual contact. Officials say the assaults took place over several months in 2020. During a court hearing this week, Farley was ordered to serve 23 years in prison. According to the Morning Sentinel, he'll also be on lifetime supervision and must register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. The Hancock County Sheriff's Office is investigating a snowmobile crash that left one person seriously injured. Lieutenant Tim Cody says 23-year-old Isaiah Reynolds was driving a snowmobile on the Bayview Road in Penobscot just after 7 Wednesday night when it went off the right side of the road. Cody says the snowmobile went into a ditch, rolled over, and ejected Reynolds. He sustained life-threatening injuries. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. Another lawsuit filed against Maine's Catholic diocese accuses a priest of sexual abuse decades ago. The complaint says Reverend Angelo Levasseur, who was a priest in Frenchville, took a boy in his early teens to a religious event in Quebec in the early 90s. Attorneys say Levasseur and the boy shared a hotel room where he gave the teen alcohol and encouraged him to take off his clothes. The alleged victim says Levasseur forced him into sexual contact, which left the boy shocked and confused. Upon returning home, Father Levasseur is alleged to have threatened the plaintiff with silence, basically saying that if you tell everyone or anyone, no one will believe you. When our client went to the diocese with his claim, he was refused and told that the diocese could not corroborate his claim. The diocese has not responded to requests for comment. Attorneys say Levisor was assigned all over Maine during his time with the diocese from southern, central, and northern parts of the state. He died in 2009. This is the 14th lawsuit filed against the diocese re recently after Maine overturned the statute of limitations on claims of sexual abuse, a law the diocese challenged and lost in court. Environmentalists and local advocates are celebrating a Maine Supreme Court decision that has major implications for a, pro a proposed fish farm in Belfast. The Maine Supreme Court ruled Nordic Aqua Farms does not rightfully own the land where the company had plans to build the large land-based salmon farm.
In 2018, Nordic Aqua Farms announced plans to develop the salmon aquaculture facility in Belfast. The company made an agreement with landowners to bury industrial pipes in the intertidal land located between their property and Penobscot Bay. However, neighbors who were against the farm claimed that they owned part of the land where construction was planned. Thursday's ruling gave ownership rights to the neighbors opposing the fish farm, making the path ahead unclear for Nordic Aqua Farms. Governor Mills has requested that President Biden issue a major disaster declaration for several Maine counties in the wake of the severe winter storm that battered Maine in late December. In a letter to the president yesterday, Governor Mills said that high winds and significant rainfall during the storm led to substantial flooding, extensive road washouts and closures. Widespread power outages and infrastructure damage that are beyond the state's capability to address. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has validated damage assessments for Knox, Oxford, Somerset, and Waldo counties. FEMA continues to undergo the validation process for Cumberland, Franklin, and York counties. The governor requested the president issue a disaster declaration for all seven counties in the event that FEMA ultimately validates damages in those counties still under review. If approved, the major disaster declaration would unlock federal assistance programs for public infrastructure. Well, there's a demand for health care jobs and more than enough people willing to take them. The only problem, not enough professors to train them. That's according to Senator Susan Collins, who says more than 90,000 applications for nursing programs were turned away nationwide in 2021, mostly because of faculty shortages. In the Senate Health Committee yesterday, the president of UNE testified that the university is finding creative ways to bridge that gap including having existing nurses train students on site. We're actually using the faculty on site, using nurses on site. We provide professional development and support from the university to have them train people on, on site in the main health hospitals. Senator Collins says UMaine had more than 1,000 applications this year for only 80 slots in its nursing program. She says she's working with others on the Senate Health Committee to look for solutions to the health care workforce shortage. Coming up on ABC7 News at noon, around 100 middle schoolers got on the ice yesterday, many learning how to fish for the very first time. This and more when we return. Bath remodeling was revolutionized in this garage in 1984 when three brothers created the iconic bath fitter tub over tub process. A breakthrough then, the industry standard now for beautiful baths without the mess, stress, or high cost. A better way from bath fitter means precise measurement, the highest quality acrylic, perfect preparation, and watertight installation backed by a lifetime warranty. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Wow, like the kids, the bills are getting bigger every month. I know. From childcare to heat to electric, I don't know how we're going to do it. We need to cut. Let's pay this one next month. Not sure we can. We already cut everything. And now electricity prices are going up because natural gas prices are up. What are we going to do? We need help. I heard that the PUC's website has information about financial assistance and conservation programs. We've never asked for help before. I know. But this year, things are different. Max True Value Hardware in Unity is the best option year-round for all of your home improvement projects. Backed by one of the leading paint manufacturers in the United States, Max will color match or custom mix any color for you. We care about your pets too, carrying all of the essential pet products in our store. During those cold winters, we take the extra step to help with wood pellets ready to load on site. We also fill all size propane cylinders year-round. Max True Value Hardware, we take pride in serving our community. Let us know how we can help you today. Bucksport Regional Health Center has cared for the community for almost 50 years. We are trusted and compassionate providers. We have also given thousands of COVID-19 vaccines because the COVID-19 vaccine is very safe, very effective, and your best shot at protecting yourself from COVID. Trust us. Trust the vaccine. Protect yourself. Take your shot against COVID-19. Journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Elantra. 
Lease a 2023 Hyundai Elantra for $239 a month or get 2.9% APR for 48 months. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Experts at the University of Maine are anticipating the worst brown tail moth outbreak in over a century. But research is being conducted to see how damage can be mitigated. Devin Dagnalt met with researchers to find out what can be done. A century has passed since brown tail moths were first introduced to Maine's ecosystem. And for those 100 years, experts have done what they could to keep the moths at bay. The forest entomology lab here at the University of Maine, a big component of our research is about brown tail moth. It is a, a large issue in the state um, and it hasn't quite reached other areas or other states, so it kind of is a main problem at the moment. The University of Maine's brown tail moth expert, Angela Mack, says she's anticipating the largest brown tail moth outbreak ever seen. However, PhD student Devin Rowe has been researching some of the moth's habits to see if Mainers can get a step ahead. We know the moth likes oak trees. We know they like fruit trees, like apple trees. But really trying to find that extent on their preferences. And because the University of Maine has a wide variety of hardwood trees, you kind of have a tree buffet. So throughout the years, we're going to try to see those changes. According to Roe, by knowing exactly what trees the moth prefers, diligent Mainers will be able to keep an eye out for brown tail moth winter webs and dispose of them. Roe says to look for webs in hardwood trees on sunny days so you can see the shine of the silk around a bunch of leaves. According to Mech, if you're able to, you should remove the nest and dispose of it to help mitigate this year's brown tail moth outbreak. So in the winter time, they're all inside the nest and that's where all the toxic hairs are as well. So don't open the nest or mess with them. Uh, and you can clip them and put them in soapy water for a couple days. Uh, or if you're allowed to, you can also burn them. Um, and so basically trying to, to kill the nest once you clip them. In Orono, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Herman's DP Porter Contractors has been chosen to complete improvements to Dexter Regional Airport. Dexter Town Manager Trampas King says the new terminal building will cost roughly $1 million. Other planned improvements include paving and renovating the airport's driveways and parking areas. This comes after the Dexter Town Council agreed to acquire the nearby Dexter Auto Club in order to use that space as part of its new terminal building in October of 2022. King says this investment will not only benefit the town, but also nearby areas. So they can go to surrounding areas, you know, they could get to Greenville and get to Bangor if they need to, and um, without dealing with the traffic at those airports. Dexter Regional Airport was awarded $760,000 in federal funding this past summer to replace its current aviation terminal building. King says he expects construction to begin in May and wrap up by November. Around 100 Milford middle schoolers got to take part in a main tradition, and for many, it was a new experience. Our David Ledford reeled in the story. First catch of the day. Good job! Thursday morning, Milford middle schoolers from Dr. Lewis S. Libby School hit the frozen waters on Pickerel Pond to learn about ice fishing with Maine's Youth Fish and Game Association. Principal David Wilcox says the day is just as much about making memories as it is about education. You have kids in high school now that used to talk about this, and so it's just been good to bring this tradition back and really see kids utilize the resources we have. It's rooted in our, in our system, and it should be in our school system, showing these kids how to use the land and really use our resources, and something like this has just been great to see. Kids were taught to set their own traps, use live bait, and recognize the types of fish they caught. While they waited for the flags on their traps to fly up, signaling a fresh catch, many took breaks to sled across the ice. However, one young ice fisherman stood by his line, hoping for a fish to take a bite just to set it free. I'm feeling great about this trip, but the, um, the previous one got away, so not good, and I'm still waiting. It takes a lot of time. Organizers of the day say it was once a story tradition in Milford, but had to be canceled the last few years due to COVID precautions. Getting ready for their first year back took nearly two months of planning. Now, teachers and parents say they want to hold the event every year moving forward. Um, we've had a few uh, great catches today, and kids have been really supportive and um, congratulating each other and, you know, hoping that everyone's going to be able to catch something. It's a great experience for the kids. A lot of them have never been ice fishing before, so this is just a great day. It's beautiful out here. In Milford, 
David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And when we return, we'll hear from Ohio residents who are gravely concerned about their air and water quality following the recent train derailment and explosion. This and more coming up. Taylor Events and Equipment Rental in Bangor for all your wedding and events. Tents, tables, chairs, and more. Also, see us for your home project equipment rentals. Taylor Events and Equipment Rental, 1179 Hammond Street in Bangor. Welcome to the Yard Goods Center in Waterville, Maine. We're a local family business since 1949. We carry over 600 different types of hand knitting yarns from Maine and all over the world. And yes, we love Barocco. Beginner or a pro, you will find all the right tools and inspiration at the Yard Goods Center. We offer knitting classes Monday through Saturday. Come to the Yard Goods Center in Waterville, Maine and become part of our family and our happy place. Dedication, teamwork, and passion drives you on the court. Coastal Auto Parts 29 locations in Maine will get you to the moment that matters. It's tourney time. Let's get up and go. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more and do more. The savings from AAA Insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. If you've been hurt in a car accident, watch out. Watch out. The insurance company is going to ask you to sign some papers. Don't do it. Watch out. You may be entitled to money your insurance company isn't telling you about. Don't trust that insurance company after your accident. You could miss out on a lot of money. Call the twos and we'll watch out for you. Lowry and Associates watched out for me and got me $400,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you're hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 Now to the toxic train disaster in Ohio. Many residents are demanding independent testing of the water and soil as the weather threatens to complicate efforts to contain the pollution. The EPA, meanwhile, says the air and water is safe. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, people in East Palestine, Ohio, bracing for a new threat stemming from the toxic crash site where a Norfolk Southern train carrying vinyl chloride derailed two weeks ago. Fearing heavy rain could spread contamination, officials built up dams along the crash site. All families need to know that they are safe. The slow-moving chemical plume from a controlled burn at the site is expected to drift into West Virginia today. But the EPA says the contaminants are well below the 560 parts per billion that the CDC considers hazardous. The state of Ohio and EPA are working hand-in-hand. Hand, and if we say that the water is safe and the air is safe, uh, we believe it because we've tested it and the data shows it. But residents say they're skeptical and scared by mixed messages on water and air safety in the last two weeks. Some reporting sore throats, vomiting, and other symptoms. That train derailment happened just back there. And you look here, this is one of those gas monitors. And on the screen, it's zeros across the board. But you talk to residents in this neighborhood, and they'll tell you that if you spend an extended amount of time here, you're going to feel something. You don't bring families back with their kids and their loved ones and then... Tell him to scrub with Dawn. Ohio's governor now calling for additional resources from the federal government. HHS and CDC crews now deploying. Meanwhile, in Michigan yesterday, another Norfolk Southern train derailment. The company saying no one was hurt and no chemicals were spilled. 
The number of toxic train derailments nationwide has been declining in recent years. Rail carriers have been involved in more than 13,000 hazardous material incidents since 2002. Norfolk Southern involved in 1,530 of those incidents, more than 100 of them classified as serious, including a 2005 derailment in South Carolina that released toxic chlorine gas. Nine people were killed. Now let's return to Maine news. During the pandemic, low-income individuals and families in Maine were getting extra money to buy food each month on their EBT cards. But now that pandemic boost in SNAP benefits is ending. Brad Rogers has more. With the extra pandemic benefits, Danette Killinger got $516 a month on her EBT card to buy food for her and her disabled adult son. She says next month it drops to just 26 bucks. $26. That's a big drop. There it is. My son's disabled and he, you know, eats a lot. <laughs> He's a grown man. And we both live on 914 a month. Congress authorized the additional SNAP payments on a temporary basis to help low-income people and families deal with the hardships of the COVID-19 pandemic. But now Tina Coughlin and her disabled son, along with her elderly mother, will all lose hundreds of dollars in benefits. Hers is going to drop to $120. For a whole month? For a whole month. We're going to struggle, and I think that a lot of the pantries are going to get overrun because people aren't going to be able to buy what they normally buy. Local food pantries are already bracing for the impact. It's going to be rough on a lot of families. We're seeing uh, a, a huge impact even with the increase of the cost of uh, groceries. Every Thursday, the South Portland Food Cupboard helps stock the shelves in the homes of dozens of families in need. Well, people are walking away from here with 25 to 30 grocery bags full of groceries, including fresh produce. They're also open Tuesdays for people to get some groceries. Director Dwayne Hopkins says he can only imagine what the demand will be next month. But this is going to be an extra added impact, one that I think is going to be unprecedented. And it's going to call, us for, or call for a greater demand, a higher demand of food and volunteers. Because of the emergency funding, Killinger managed to avoid the food bank. Now she has no choice. I haven't been there in years, but... We'll find out. Is this the time to be taking benefits away? No. No, absolutely not. It's definitely the worst possible time. Now let's switch gears and check in to get that full forecast with meteorologist Evan Bakes. All righty, here we go. Winter storm warnings in effect for the northern ends of the state. No surprise to see an upgrade there with significant snow accumulations taking place there. Ice accumulations will be an issue as well, which is why we have winter weather advisories posted until about 10 p.m. Friday as well. Same with the winter storm warnings and further down toward the south. Gale warnings and small craft advisories in effect. Both of these expiring at 7 a.m. as we head towards your Saturday when everything else starts to calm down. Wave highs are starting to pick up a bit at around 3 to 4 feet according to some of the buoys. 5 to even 8 feet further down to the south and west according to some of the buoys. So things start to pick up just a bit as that system begins to approach. We've been watching some snow that's been falling across the northern ends of the state throughout the morning period. We're going to be watching for more freezing rain, sleet, and snow. Pretty much that winter mix building in throughout the rest of the daytime period today. And eventually switching over to snow. And especially with this leading edge right about in here that's, start, that's moving in. And if you look closely, the lightning tracker is picking up on some lightning with this as well. So don't be surprised if you notice some thunder and lightning with the precipitation that may fall as well. But here's the area of low pressure tracking from the west going toward the east. And once we get this out of here, high pressure will be our friend. And that will help to clear the skies out of here with a lot of sunshine on the way for the daytime tomorrow. Future cash showing us winter mix switching over to snow by about 4 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon period, pretty much ending by about 6 to 7 o'clock or so. And the sky clearing out of here by midnight. So by tomorrow, look at this, a lot of sunshine on the way, maybe a few passing clouds for a few of us. And clouds will be the general idea on and off as we head towards Saturday night and the parts of early Sunday morning as well, mixing in with some sunshine. So the weekend will thankfully start to calm down once we get the system through. Additional snowfall of around 6 inches or so in the Caribou area before we're all finished up. Other spots though, around 1 to 2, maybe up to 3 inches before we're all finished up as well. Also some ice concerns as well. Maybe up to another tenth of an inch of ice before we're all finished up. Maybe two tenths of an inch. If you're lucky, this guidance run may be underdoing it just a bit. We'll have to keep an eye on that as it does develop. So your forecast for today, mid-30s, our winter mix will switch over to snow. With that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 8 degrees, partly cloudy, some snow showers early. The north wind gusting up 
to around 30 miles per hour. A lot better tomorrow, partly cloudy with highs in the lower 30s. Now west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at your extended forecast. So we're mostly cloudy on Sunday with highs back in the lower 40s. Upper 40s by Monday with a chance for rain. And partly cloudy on Tuesday, highs in the upper 30s. When Mainly Mercantile wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Mainly Mercantile is a venue of small businesses. We are a diverse group offering upcycled furniture and home decor, vintage items, jewelry, DIY creative products, made in Maine items, and souvenirs. The roar of the crowd. The excitement in the stands. The dedication, passion, and teamwork on the court. Driven by the love of the game. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together, Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovation supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home, or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. Hey, May. How are you? Yes, you. How are you really? It's a question we rarely ask ourselves. But to Northern Light Health, how you are means a lot. So we're out here asking and encouraging you to ask the people in your life, starting with yourself. So ask away. Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you. Backwoods Veterans Foundation is putting on its fourth annual snowmobile ride today and tomorrow up at Pittston Farm in Rockwood. The foundation was started by Sean Mills, who had a vision to give back to some friends that were veterans. Some of them were dealing with medical issues like PTSD, and he wanted to give them a weekend away where they could enjoy a nice snowmobile ride and the greatness that Maine brings this time of year. If I have any avenue at all to give back, this is, this is the way I can do it, and I'm happy I'm able to at least give them two days of an experience out of their normal day and, and take them into the woods and show them some sort of appreciation. You know, I, I've been doing this for four years and I see the smile on their face when they get here and I see the bigger smile when they leave. The ride has grown thanks to great participation from the community and more than 40 sponsors. They also have a silent auction and fireworks going on as part of the weekend. So far, they have donated seven snowmobiles with full sets of gear and complete lodging for some veterans that have participated in the ride. Sean wants any veteran to know if they would like to come up for the ride, get in touch with him at Pittston Farm, and he will find a way to get you a ride and take care of everything you need while you're there. That's all for ABC 7 News at Noon. Thank you for watching. I'm Emma Smith, and we'll see you this evening on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great weekend. Hi folks, this is Barry Gass of Gass Horse Supply and Western Wear in Orono. We've been in business since 1911, and our third generation family owned business can't wait to show you our unique line of Western Wear and Western Tack. We have Western boots, shirts, hats, belts, and buckles for the entire family. And Western Tack, from bridles to saddles and everything in between for your horse. Gass Horse Supply and Western Wear, where the American West comes alive in Maine. You're watching ABC7 Bangor.